Fujian venator prodigiosus may be one of the earliest birds in the fossil record. And I'm using the phrase birds here with air quotes because birds and where exactly the first true birds actually are in the phylogenetic research varies depending on who you talk to. However, it was at least very closely related to the birds as an avalian. Avalians basically just includes all of the dinosaurs that were closer related to birds than to any other major group of dinosaurs, such as the Trudontids or the Dromaeosaur or raptor type dinosaurs. So really, really closely related, but it also has some traits that are pretty similar with some of those other groups. One of the most obvious of these from this mostly complete fossil, it is missing a skull and some of the neck vertebra, but otherwise it's mostly all there, is that it still had a very long tail. There's been some debate about this, and I personally like the idea of pygostylia as the first true birds, meaning they had a pygostyle, a series of fused tail vertebra that made the tail very short, but could support a full fan of feathers at the end of that tail. This animal did not have that. It still had the very long traditional dinosaur type tail. So it may have been doing something a bit differently as far as its evolutionary lineage, rather than going for something like a pygostyle later down its evolutionary line. But there's some things like the animals that are closer to birds and like some other dinosaurs throughout this animal's body. For example, you can look at the humerus being longer than the femur, something we see in later bird relatives, but not in things like dromaeosaurs or trudontids. And there's still a small deltopectoral crest on the humerus, which is more like those in other bird relatives, but not birds from the Jurassic. The ulna of the forearm is also shorter than the humerus, which is like the situation in non-bird dinosaurs. But the ulna is also straight, which is not what we see in animals like Archaeopteryx or even some of the dromaeosaurs. The first hand bone is about a quarter of the length of the second, which is odd when you compare it to things like Anchiornis, also one of these very early diverging avalians. However, it's also pretty similar to that that we see in Archaeopteryx. And that's just some of the traits that are kind of a hodgepodge of different groups just in the hands and arms. The legs also have a bunch of these. So it's this really interesting look into how there is kind of this broad diversity of different shapes converging in different groups of bird-like dinosaurs. This may suggest that this kind of convergence on many different traits, but different mosaics of them, may have actually helped the birds be the only dinosaurs to actually survive the KPG extinction. However, this animal was not from near the KPG extinction. Instead, it lived during the late Jurassic about 149 million years ago. This is one of the earlier occurrences of a bird-like dinosaur in the fossil record. And because of those other ones, we actually have some sense of where they may have started to evolve. Because this is the southernmost find of a bird-like dinosaur from the Jurassic. And it's not very far south. In the time period it would have lived in, the location would have been about here, where this red star is. However, you can still see the other two stars, which represent the Yan Liao biota and the Solnhofen limestone, respectively. And we have bird fossils from those two places as well, or at least bird-like fossils, including things like Archaeopteryx from the Solnhofen. So what this means is that the Northern Hemisphere was probably the origin point for birds, which is a little bit interesting because it seems like dinosaurs actually got started in the Southern Hemisphere, so they were able to migrate to the North and then diversify into the birds there and then spread back across the globe. They also did some other analyses though, including with just relative limb lengths and with a number of different variations of different bones and whatnot. And from that, they were able to compare Fujian venator to all of the other paraavians and bird-like dinosaurs, or at least a lot of them. And what they found is it was pretty strange. You can see that pretty distinctly on this graph where it is just this huge outlier and its placement directly over the Scansoriopterygidae shouldn't be taken as, oh, it was a Scansoriopterygid because it could have really gone anywhere along that top line, that axis of the graph. And the reason it went there is probably just because there was space. It's nothing about how interesting it was, but you can still see how unique it was based on the ratios of those various limb elements. This actually suggests that Fujivanator was actually very well adapted to be running around on the ground. It had a shorter femur bone and longer lower leg bones, which is one of those traits we kind of seen a lot of animals that live and run around on ground. This is interesting because one of those other animals that was near that part of the tree in the phylogeny, Anchiornis, has been suggested to be mostly gliding around trees rather than actually running on the ground. So it was doing something totally different from some of the other bird-like dinosaurs, and really goes to show just how diverse and complex the evolution of birds and things like them actually was. 
And so hopefully we'll get some more fossils of things like this and be able to get a better understanding of how birds actually did evolve.